Hello and welcome to the video about the specific and latent heat laboratory exercise. In this laboratory exercise, you're going to be measuring the specific heat of water and the latent heat of fusion of ice. So in order to measure the specific heat of water, you're going to be submerging a small heating element into a known amount of water. You're then going to be using your power is equal to energy divided by time relationship. So P is equal to its energy, but the energy is in the form of heat in this case, on time relationship, and the relationship between energy, Q, heat energy, and the specific heat, MC delta T, which is the final temperature minus the initial temperature, in order to find C, the specific heat of water. So you'll know how much energy you've added because you'll be able to measure the amount of power going in using P is equal to VI, voltage times current, which are two quantities that you will be measuring with your multimeter. So this is how you're going to do the first part of the experiment. In the second part, you're going to be measuring the latent heat of fusion of ice. So in this part, you're going to be submerging ice in water and measuring the temperature before and after the ice has melted. And then using Q is equal to the mass of ice times the latent heat of fusion. And you'll also be able to work out the heat transfer by looking at the change in temperature of the water around the ice and considering the change in temperature of the ice after it's melted as well. So let's have a look at the equipment that you'll be using now. This is the equipment that you'll be using for this experiment. You should set your power supply to 6 volts using the little switch on the side. You'll also have two multimeters. One is going to be used as an ammeter. For the ammeter, you should use the unfused setting as the power outputs at around 2.5 amps, and this will blow the fuse if you use the fused setting. For the voltmeter, use the fused setting. You'll also have a switch because you don't want the current flowing through your resistor when it's not heating the water. You'll have your logger probe with a temperature probe to measure the temperature of the water. And you'll also have two calorimeters. One of these calorimeters has a resist resistor with it, a little coil of wire here, which you'll use as a heating element. And the other has no resistor. You'll be using this second one to measure the latent heat of fusion of ice. The calorimeter is just a aluminium can surrounded by polystyrene. Polystyrene is not a good thermal conductor, so this is going to insulate it and stop the heat escaping out the side. So in order to start this experiment, you're going to need to measure the mass of aluminium. So in order to do that, carefully unscrew the plastic top from the top of the aluminium stirrer being very careful to place it somewhere safe so that you don't lose it. And then measure the mass of the aluminium can plus the stirrer on the scales, which will be at the side of the lab. Record this mass and then use the tap at the side of the lab to fill your calorimeter can to about two thirds full. You can then measure the mass again, either before or after collecting your temperature measurements. And from the difference in the mass now and the mass beforehand, I can work out how much water is in that calorimeter. So once you've done that, you're ready to start recording your measurements. So you're going to need to set up your circuit. Remember that the ammeter goes in series 
with the resistor and the voltmeter needs to go in parallel across it. You need to measure the voltage and the current in order to calculate the power. So make a me record of what these are at the start of the five minutes before as you heat the water and at the end of the five minutes as well. So let's just quickly wire that up. Now I need my power coming out of my power supply into my switch then out of my switch into my ammeter for which I'm using the unfused setting out of my ammeter and into my resistor and then out of my resistor back into my power supply in a nice loop so now the switch and the ammeter in series with the resistor I now plug my voltmeter in parallel across the resistor. When your circuit parts set up, leave the switch open so that we're not currently heating the water and set up the Logger Pro. So the Logger Pro, remember, needs three attachments, the power, to the USB at port at the back of the computer and to the temperature probe. You can switch, put the temperature probe through the hole in the lid of the calorimeter. Make sure that the temperature probe is only touching the water and not touching the aluminium sides of the calorimeter. Once that's set up, open the template on your computer. So go to experiments, logger pro, and then select select the specific and latent heat experiment. When you're ready to collect the data, open the, sorry, close the switch, press collect, and then make sure that you're continuously gently stirring the water so that the water inside the calorimeter remains in thermal equilibrium throughout the experiment. When you just start doing this, record the voltage and the current in your book. When you've finished recording for five minutes, record the current and the voltage in your lab manual. Switch off the switch, move it to the open position so that the current's no longer flowing through it, and then stop recording on your specific and latent heat template on the computer. Now you should have a nice straight upwards trend. What you're going to need to do is fit a straight line to that. So highlight all the data from when it was being heated and hit the straight line tool at the top. That's going to give you the gradient for this line. In the theoretical problems you're going to come up with a relationship between the gradient of this line and the specific heat of water. So you may want to have a think about that before you come to the lab. When you've done it for one sample for five minutes Empty the water from the calorimeter into the sink. Refill it with cold water. Have a think about why you'd want to do it with cold water instead of just continuing to heat the already warm water. And repeat this at least another two times so that you have three measurements of CW from your gradient and you can calculate an uncertainty in your value for CW. In the second part of this experiment, you're going to be measuring the latent heat of fusion of ice. You need to come up with your own method to do this. You've got a separate calorimeter that you can use. You've got water in the tap. It provides both warm and cold water. You've got ice in the ice machine. A hint with this experiment is a good idea to dry your ice cubes on a piece of paper towel before placing them into the calorimeter. Have a think about why you'd want to dry those ice cubes. 
You can then use the temperature probe or whatever you think is the best method to measure the latent heat of fusion of ice. Make sure that you take enough measurements so that you can also calculate on an uncertainty in your results. Now with this equipment, when you return it to the hatch, it's important that you return it in the same state you got it. So you're going to need to make sure that you've dried everything with paper towel. Please don't return the equipment all wet. Make sure that the outside of the polystyrene inside the calorimeter is dry. Okay, thanks and I hope that you enjoy and learn a lot from this experiment.